filtration membrane and filtration pressure. The kidney converts blood plasma into urine in four stages, glomerular filtration, tubular reabsorption, tubular secretion, and water conservation. The fluid has three names during this process. The first form of the fluid is called glomerular filtrate, which is fluid that is held within the capsular space. This fluid is similar to blood plasma except it has almost no proteins. The second form of the fluid is called tubular filtrate, which is fluid as it passes from the proximal convoluted tubule through the distal convoluted tubule. This fluid differs from the glomerular filtrate because its substances are emoted and added by the tubule cells. The third form of the fluid is called urine. Urine is when the fluid has entered into the collecting duct. After it enters the collecting duct, it undergoes very little alteration other than the change in water concentration. Glomerular filtration is the process in which water and solutes in the blood plasma pass from the capillaries of the glomerulus into the capsular space of the nephron. The fluid passes through three barriers that make up the filtration membrane during glomerular filtration. The first barrier is the fenestrated endothelial cells of the capillaries. The glomerular capillaries are made up of endothelial cells with large filtration pores. These filtration pores are similar to the fenestrated capillaries that we saw earlier during the semester when studying the cardiovascular system. The fenestrae make these cells highly permeable, but they are also small enough to prevent the filtration of blood cells. These cells are also covered with a glycocalyx that is thought to play a role in preventing albumin and other plasma proteins from passing through the basement membrane. The second barrier in the filtration membrane is the basement membrane. The basement membrane forms the structural foundation of the glomerular capillaries and also serves as a place for the endothelial cells and podocytes to anchor. They also consist of a proteoglycan gel that has a negative charge which holds back even some small molecules. It does not allow large molecules to pass through it because of the small spaces in the proteoglycan gel. Blood albumin does not pass through even though it is small enough to pass through the spaces. However, it has a negative charge so it is repelled by the basement membrane. The third barrier in the filtration membrane is the filtration slits made of podocytes. A podocyte has a bulbous body and many thick arms. It is a specialized endothelial cell that covers the outside of the capillary. Each of the arms has numerous extensions called foot processes or pedicles that wrap around the capillaries and intertwine with one another in a comb-like fashion. The pedicles have negatively charged filtration slits that also prevent large anions from being filtered. However, other molecules such as water, electrolytes, glucose, fatty acids, amino acids, nitrogenous wastes, and vitamins are all able to pass freely into the capsular space. Other molecules, however, do not pass through the membrane because they are bound to plasma proteins that are unable to pass through. These include calcium, iron, and thyroid hormone. As you can see, the blood flowing through the capillaries is under more pressure than the fluid in the capsular space, so the blood flows down the concentration gradient. The fenestrae allow small molecules to pass through but prevent larger molecules, such as blood cells, from being filtered. 
kidney infections can damage the filtration membrane and allow albumin, such as albuminuria, or blood cells to filter through. Kidney disease can be detected by the presence of proteins, proteinuria, or the presence of blood in the urine, known as hematuria. Glomular filtration is similar to other methods of capillary filtration in that it allows the fluid to flow from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. The blood pressure in the glomerular capillaries is higher here than anywhere else due to the afferent arterial being larger than the efferent arterial. This allows more fluid to flow in than that is flowing out. This is why molecules are being filtered out of the blood, an area of higher pressure, to the urine, which is an area of lower pressure. The hydrostatic pressure in the capsular space is fairly high, while there is a slightly negative pressure elsewhere. This is due to the high rate of filtration and the continual accumulation of fluid in the capsule. The colloid osmotic pressure of the blood is the same here as it is everywhere else. At this point, the glomerular filtrate is almost protein-free. In most capillaries, the blood hydrostatic pressure drops low enough that osmosis occurs, allowing the capillaries to absorb fluid. However, in the glomerular capillaries, the pressure doesn't drop low enough to allow osmosis to occur. This is due to the afferent arterial allowing more fluid to flow in than is flowing out through the efferent arterial, in return not allowing fluid to be absorbed by the capillaries. High blood pressure in the glomeruli can easily cause hypertension in the kidneys, which can rupture the glomerular capillaries and lead to scarring. Scarring of the kidneys is known as nephrosclerosis. Chronic hypertension can lead to renal failure. Measurements of both kidney function and structure are very important in minimizing kidney disease. Current imaging methods include ultrasounds, computer tomography, and MRIs. These methods, however, only provide information about the structural changes of the kidney. Determining functional changes is the most important in preventing and controlling kidney disease. New advancements have been made in medical imaging that now allows for observing the kidney structure and the function in more ways than ever before. This is expected to play an excruciatingly important role in managing kidney disease in the future.